So since my teaching semester is about to start again, I thought I'd make a video from one of my favorite classes to teach, which is abstract algebra. And here we're gonna focus on a nice classic group theory problem from another really classic abstract algebra textbook from Hurstein. So let's see what we have here. So let's suppose that we have a group G satisfying the condition that A, B to the I is equal to A to the I, B to the I for three consecutive natural numbers I. And if that's satisfied, then in fact, A times B is equal to B times A. And so here I just said times for my group operation, but I should stress here that this is our group operation. It could be, well, a number of different things depending on the setting. Here we're working inside an abstract group where this condition holds. I'd also like to just recall that a group is a set together with an operation satisfying three axioms. The first of which is associativity. So in other words, x times y times z is equal to x times y times z. And again, I'm using times here, but we really should be thinking as group operation. And then there's an identity element that's generally called E, so that if you combine that with anything, you get whatever you started with. And for every element, there is an inverse, which is like a path back to the identity. So you could think of that as like the reciprocal in natural numbers or rational numbers, or perhaps a negative number of a positive integer inside of the integers. Okay, so anyway, let's see if we can get through this solution. Okay, so let's suppose we have a number, and I'm gonna take this number to be bigger than or equal to two, such that the three following things hold, and that is a times b to the n minus one is equal to a to the n minus one times b to the n minus one, and then a b to the n is equal to a to the n b to the n, and finally a to the n plus one, or a b, to the n plus one is equal to a to the n plus one, b to the n plus one. So in other words, our three consecutive natural numbers making this thing right here work are n minus one, n, and n plus one. And I don't think it's super necessary to symmetrize it the way that I did here. I could have just done n, n plus one, and n plus two, but I'd like to point out that if there's an opportunity to symmetrize our choices, it's often a good idea. Here it doesn't make it any easier, but in other places it does. So we might as well kind of point that out. Okay, so now we're ready to do some calculations, if you will. So let's note the following. We can take a times b to the n, and we can write it as a to the n times b to the n by, well, this second rule right here. So I'll underline that in green and I'll just put a star right here. And then I can also split this apart and write it as a b and then a b to the n minus one. I think that's pretty clear. And then I can apply this blue underline to that second batch of terms. So let's see, that's gonna be equal to a, b, and then we'll have a to the n minus one, b to the n minus one. Okay, so we've got something like that. So now what I'll do is multiply the right-hand side of this equation by the inverse of b to the n minus one, and then we'll multiply the left-hand side of this equation by a inverse. So let's maybe notate that as the following. We're gonna do A inverse, and then I'm just gonna put a little box here to just say we're doing it to that whole equation. And then we're gonna do B to the one minus N. That's the inverse of B to the N minus one kind of clearly. So let's see what that leaves us with. So we're gonna be left with A inverse, A to the N, B to the N, and then uh, B, to the minus n times b to the one. I just split those apart. So that's what's on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we're gonna have a inverse b, a to the n minus one, b to the n minus one, and then b to the one minus n. So that's what we're gonna have on the right-hand side. 
And then let's see if we get some nice simplification here. And in fact, we do. So let's observe that this a to the n and a to the n minus one will simplify down to a to the n minus one. I guess I should say a to the n and a to the minus one. And then, well, what else? This b to the n and then this b to the minus n just like straight cancel. And then let's see, for this next term, we have this b to the one minus n and b to the n minus one cancel. And let's see. This a that I left out here when I brought this down will also cancel with this a inverse. So now let's see what we have in the end. So we're gonna have a to the n minus one b is equal to b times a to the n minus one. So now let's see what we can do with this other one as well. So let's do a calculation based off of that. So I'll just put also here. We're gonna have a b to the n plus one is gonna be equal to a to the n plus one times b to the n plus one, but in fact, it's also equal to a b and then a b to the n. Here, we're just essentially doing the same thing. And then this is gonna be a b, a to the n, b to the n. And now, well, we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna multiply the left-hand side of this equation by a inverse and the right-hand side of this equation by b to the minus n, or in other words, the inverse of b to the n. Now, I won't do that out in all the details that I did above, but that's gonna give us a to the n, b is equal to b, a to the n. And well, just so that we're really clear with what we used here, this thing that's underlined in magenta was used with this part of the calculation right here. And then this thing that's underlined in blue was used up here, and the thing that's underlined in green was used down here. So now we kind of see where everything was used. Okay, so that being said, we're gonna start the next board with these two things that I'm boxing and then bring it home. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up, and if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing, it really helps us out. Okay. So previously we took our hypotheses and showed that a to the n minus one b was the same thing as b a to the n minus one and a to the n b was the same thing as b a to the n. Now I'm gonna start with this second one right here and see what we can do out of that. So I'm gonna take this b a to the n and I'm gonna, on the one hand, write it as a to the n b using the second rule that we have right there. But I'm also gonna write that as b times a to the n minus one times a using the fact that a to the n minus one times a is a to the n. But now I can apply this rule right here, our first rule to this to write it as what? Well, a to the n minus one b times a. So let's maybe be thorough with exactly where we used these. So let's see, this right here was used for this equality, and then this right here was used for this equality. So that's where we used each of those. Okay, nice. And now we're gonna take this equation and simply left multiply it by a to the one minus n. So I'm just gonna write it like this. We're doing a to the one minus n multiplied into the left hand equals the right hand side of our equation up there. But notice a to the one minus n times a to the n is a. So we've got a times b here. And then a to the one minus n times a to the n minus one is the identity. So that gives us b times a here. But check it out, we've achieved our goal. We've shown that a times b is equal to b times a, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And that's a good place.